But in the, in the Bible, there are stories and there are statements, right? There are examples and stories of things that happened. And then there are statements which actually explain, you know, this is right and this is wrong. And a very good principle to have is we need to interpret these stories in the Bible with statements in the Bible. A good example is, you know, stories in the Bible, people had multiple wives, they had concubines, they did all these things in the Old Testament that they shouldn't necessarily have done. And we know that they're wrong because we interpret those stories based on the statements in the Bible, based on the commandments. But I don't think that principle is complete, meaning I don't think it's enough to just say we need to interpret the Bible stories with statements. Because I would, what I would add to that is we need to interpret the Bible stories with Bible statements in light of the New Testament. Because we can't just take a Bible statement to interpret a Bible story and not take into account that a change has taken place from the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Right? So a couple of examples of that is, well, I just want to show you a couple of verses quickly um, to show that in the Old Testament, they did, they did not have all knowledge. You know, they, they didn't know everything. There were things that were hidden. First uh, Corinthians 2, verse 7. And I'm not going to go through all the verses in my notes. Um, so if you want all of them, you can check out the blog later. Look here in 1 Corinthians 2. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So the wisdom always existed. And that, that lines up with in the beginning was the Word, right? The Word being eternal, the wisdom of God was always there, but it was hidden. And then at certain points in time, God revealed more and more wisdom, revealed more and more in that Word. He manifested His Word through preaching, we learn in Titus. So it says here, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom. We, Paul the Apostle here, referring to you know, him and the people that were ordained to preach the Word of God in the New Testament, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. As it is written, I have not seen or ear heard, Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And yeah, it's interesting, you know, sorry I'm going off on different trails here. I just think it's interesting that verse, you know, often we think of that verse as, as heaven, right? Saying, we don't know what's going to happen in heaven. I have not seen nor yet heard the things that God hath prepared for them that love him. But here, isn't Paul saying here that the things that I have not seen nor yet heard are the things that was the hidden wisdom that are now revealed to Paul? So maybe it's saying, hey, before I have not seen nor yet heard, and now that Jesus Christ is revealed and the wisdom given to the apostles in the New Testament, now I have seen and ear of heard, right? And we have this spiritual understanding. Um, but God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. <clears throat> which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And that really is the springboard verse that people will jump from to say, hey, yeah, the Bible is its best commentary. You want to find out what the Bible means before running to a dictionary or before running to a commentary, I don't necessarily have anything against those, but before going to those, shouldn't we just check out what the Bible says about itself? You know, let's compare spiritual things with spiritual. That's where we get this, the, the principle of interpreting Bible stories with statements. But we also have to compare spiritual with spiritual because we need to take into account also the New Covenant, which has changed things to interpret the statements we read in the Old Testament. Um, I'll just turn to one more uh, verse in regards to that point. Uh, look at this verse here. It says, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four and few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. And look at verse 5 which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets. So you see there that there was wisdom that was hidden, wisdom that was not known in other ages, but is now made known. First Peter. Look at what Peter writes here in First Peter. It says, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So talking about the plan of salvation, how we're saved. 
And look in verse 10. Of which salvation, so this salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow after so that, that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them, that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. So he's saying here that the Old Testament prophets, they preached the word of God. They preached the suffering of Christ, but they searched the scriptures trying to figure out how and when and how, or how the things were going to happen. But now that it was revealed in the New Testament, we know exactly how it all happened. Because we look at it in the past, we know how Jesus came, how he fulfilled the law, how everything played out. In the Old Testament, they didn't know how it was all going to play out. And that's why when you read the New Testament, they're always saying like, you know, you're going to establish the kingdom now. And they're always asking Jesus, this is how it's meant to work. And you remember when John the Baptist was in jail, he's like, are you the one we're waiting for? Or do we look for another? Because the people in the Old Testament, when they only had the Old Testament scriptures, they were looking through a glass darkly. They didn't have all the knowledge and all the wisdom and the revelation we have now in the New Testament. And that's why they were a little confused because they're trying to figure these things out. But they're revealed to us in the New Testament. So a couple of examples of, remember, because we're talking about the principle. And you take Bible stories, you interpret them with Bible statements, but you need to interpret Bible statements in light of the New Covenant and the Old Covenant. Because what are some examples, maybe some controversial in our circle, where if you take statements in the Bible without, without uh, uh, interpreting them in light of the New Testament, you would actually get into false doctrine. One would be um, food laws. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, don't eat this, abomination to eat this. And if you don't take into account the principle in the New Testament that no man judge you in meat or in drink or in holy day or in respect to the new moons or the Sabbaths, which have been done away in Jesus Christ, you can't just take that statement and say, oh, it's wrong to eat pork because it's an unclean animal. Because we have to interpret it in light of the New Testament, right? And some other examples, you know, is the Sabbaths I just mentioned. You know, another one is, you know, if you obey, you're blessed. If you disobey, you're cursed. Because yes, there is the statement in the Bible that if you obey, God sets before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you all keep the commandments of the Lord, a curse if you disobey the commandments of the Lord. But if we don't interpret that in light of the new covenant, which is, hey, that was salvation by works. That was the old covenant, which nobody could keep. And if we apply that covenant to us now, we're all cursed. The new covenant is a covenant of grace where we don't have to keep the works to be saved. It's not about repenting of your sins or keeping the commandments. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we interpret those Old Testament statements. Um, and the last one, you know, which is a bit more controversial, I just want to throw it out here. But, you know, like tithing, for example. Because tithing is a statement in the Bible. But if we don't take into account the New Covenant and the Old Covenant, I think there's a, there's a bit of debate there. But, you know, me personally, I think it has to do with the Levitical priesthood. Same with my position on musical instruments. It has to do with the temple worship and, 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 and um, um, Levitical priesthood and things like that. And I think, you know, you can have the wrong understanding, I believe, on these topics if you don't take into account the uh, New Testament scriptures and the new understanding that God has given us in the New Testament. 